Alright, so I'm Sarah Sherman and I'm giving my uh, my educational giant is on Jean-Jacques Rosu. And if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, then I'm terribly sorry that you're going to have to listen to it so many times. Alright, so throughout history, as we know, there have been many influential thinkers and philosophers that have made substantial contributions to theories of education. One great thinker of the past was, indeed, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. His philosophy on the nature of education and human development has led to a number of other theories and has been practiced by many educators throughout time. He mainly focuses on the idea of isolating the students from the biased influences of others. Um, Rousseau originated, he had like, from a troubled past, his childhood wasn't at all ideal, and um, that didn't stop him though, he still became the best he could be, and became a very important thinker in many fields of education, or many fields including education. Um, in many ways, I believe that Rousseau's early childhood was the leading cause of his, um, his idea of isolating. Um, Jean-Jacques Rousseau was born in Geneva uh, or something. It's a city-state and was a Protestant associate of the Swiss Confederi Con Con Confederacy. Um, <laughs> it's now like modern-day Switzerland. That's where he was born. And it, he was born in 1712 on June the 28th. He was born to Isaac Rousseau and Suzanne Bernard. Rousseau's mother, Suzanne, died nine days after his birth. Um, Rousseau was therefore raised by his father, Isaac. Um, Isaac remarried when Jean was about 10 years old, and because of that, he decided, I guess, not to see his son very often. Um, and so Jean's uncle took him in and raised him for a short amount of time. Um, Jean was many things. Um, in his youth, he was an apprentice to both a notary and an engraver. He had a desire to be a uh, pro Protestant minister. Um, later, he went on to study to be a Catholic priest. Um, along with that, he was also a musician, and he was a music teacher, so he kind of did everything. Pretty impressive, in my opinion. All right, um, his philosophy of education, though, derives from the fact that, in essence, he raised himself. This fact also explains, you know, his his view of isolation because he was so isolated. I guess it worked for him, so he thought it was a good idea. Um, his philosophy is based on the idea that humans are born with a perfect goodness and that they become corrupted by other people with whom they encounter. He believed that the role of an, an educator was not necessarily a teacher but more of a tutor. Um, he believed that their job is to lead the student to form their own ideas and opinions about the world. He set forth a systematic idea of that includes four stages of a person's life and education. So the first stage begins in infancy and it continues until the kid until the child is about age twelve. Um, and this stage um, is it's pretty much meant to avoid making the child believe that domination and submission are the only connections between humans. He he kind of gave us, well, the example is that um, a child cries out for attention from his parents or caregivers, and that is a sign of subordination and submission. Um, he kind of wants us to deter that, and he's of the opinion that the child should be as free as possible while still keeping him or her safe. Um, so the second stage in his theory, um, it begins around age 12. Um, during this stage is when the student begins to grasp abstract concepts and various skills through different experiences. Um, he firmly believes in staying away from education gained through textbooks and what many would call formal lessons. Um, Rosu believed that throughout the first stages the child should be kept isolated from the biased opinions of the outside world, um, and that isolation is only to end when the child enters puberty. Um, Rosu, back to the um, 
formal lessons and stuff, Rosu is a strong believer that it's not about what's in the book necessarily, it's about your experience in life. And he believes that, that is a very effective way of learning. Um, but on to our next stage, the third stage. This is stage occurs when the child is in that change from childhood to adulthood. Um, in this stage, the child will build relationships with others, and they're going to discover how they fit in. Um, Rosie believes that you must, you absolutely, positively must avoid the desire to be dependent on others or being submissive to them. It's, it's like that you have to be who you are, and you can't let others persuade you to be who you want to be. And when you're discovering how and where you fit in, it's, it's vital that you don't give in to other people. Um, so as the tutor, um, the teacher is to keep a relationship non-competitive between students and also to help them find security in their own self-worth. Um, at this time, the role of the teacher kind of changes into a an advisor, or the way I see it is kind of a friend. Um, they're just there to give you advice, you know, they've been there, they've done that kind of sort of thing. Um, so the fourth stage involves the acquisition of a spouse that will also assist in the recognition of the student for the student's sake. Um, furthermore, the student is more fully immersed in the dealings of the social world. Um, throughout these four stages, the main goal of the tutor is to help the student remain uninfluenced by the world and to lead them to form their own beliefs. I, I think that's pretty cool, and we should all, everyone has their own opinions and everything, and I agree with that, but there's also things that I disagree about Rosie's theories. I, I don't believe that it's right to keep a child isolated and secluded from other people and their biases, because the fact of the matter is that everyone has an opinion, everyone is biased in some way, and if the child doesn't get accustomed to that, they're going to have a really hard time later on in life. You, if you keep a kid in a bubble, it's not going to, to know what to do when you let it out of that bubble. It's, it's going to be a whole new place, and sometimes it's just too much for a person to handle. Um, so I believe that a child should be in the world and should experience it and learn that way. Like, like he was saying, learn from your experiences, but I think that that should be incorporated all through childhood, not just in the later stages. Um, so, um, in modern day school systems, I, I see a lot of the third stage being used, um, which is when the teacher becomes the advisor to the student. I've, um, I've had that like quite a bit in my experiences. I have had many teachers that are just overjoyed when you go to them for advice. They're like, oh yay, we can help you. We know what you're going through, kind of, sort of. and they can help you out and they're so happy to do that and I think it's great because I mean it's it's extremely helpful no matter what age you are to have someone there to help help you out and give you advice um, having said that though this brings in this idea of trust and trusting in the teacher and trusting in the student um, it becomes like it becomes extremely important it's imperative that the student trust the teacher during this stage. If the student doesn't trust the teacher, then it's not the student's never going to do anything that the teacher advises, and in extreme cases, he may just decide to up and do the opposite, which could be very bad in some cases. Um, teachers, I feel like they really need to be able to have that that thing about them where they can just connect with their students so perfectly and just let them know that they care about them a lot um, because when you do that you gain that trust in the student and the student in turn gains that trust in you um, which is just like I said before it's just imperative um, I I agree wholeheartedly with stage 3 of Rosu's design um, the only thing is like that I would change a little bit about it is that I believe that it's not just the the latter part of life that matters the latter part of the student's education it's it needs to be incorporated throughout um, 
all through elementary school, middle school, and high school, and now currently my college professors, they all give me advice. And I remember things that I was told in elementary school that that were extremely important. I remember my teachers giving me advice, and um, sure, it may not be as significant as advice that you receive later on, like, but it's still important. It still creates that bond, I believe, that the student-teacher relationship needs. Um, you know, in 11th grade, they might be giving you advice on colleges or on relationships, and in first grade, it, it could just be something simple like, I don't know, like who to play with at recess or, you know, how to, what the best way is for you to remember your multiplication tables or just friend problems. <laughs> um, if you have those in first grade, I don't know. First graders these days are, they can be dramatic, I guess. Um, so I believe that the advice is necessary all throughout, all throughout the student's education. Um, so in conclusion, Rosu was very impressive and intelligent. Um, he did a lot of different things and he inspired a lot of people. Um, I believe that he was a very accomplished man. He, it impresses me that he had such a terrible childhood and he went on to be so, such a great thing. I mean, growing up he probably never expected to be affecting the education system 300 years after he was born. I mean, it's, that's a long time. He's in my mind, he's just an extremely accomplished man and led a very productive life because his ideas have influenced and shaped our education system so much for 300 years. I never would think that I would have that impact on anyone and to think that people actually do is just, it's all inspiring to me personally and I think that, I think it's awesome. Um, so. His ideas pretty much summed, summed up. They're just that he thinks that children develop and learn best if they are kept from the bias and, I, and the opinions of different adults and um, believe that teachers are to be advisors and tutors. And so that's, that's Jean-Jacques Rossu for you. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed my presentation, and it wasn't incredibly boring. Alright, I'll see you guys later.